Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen. It's been a month since 2023 started, and it's time to get back into it. But first, a quick note from our sponsor for today's video. For a limited time, my friends at Toby Gaming are holding a sweepstake campaign allowing you guys to win their flagship product, the Toby Eye Tracker 5, as well as 5 copies of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, if you don't know what the Toby Eye Tracker is, well, we'll be checking it out extensively in today's video. But in a nutshell, it's a comprehensive eye and head tracking peripheral that takes the immersion within Microsoft Flight Simulator to another level. Incorporating next generation tracking and intelligent sensor technology, it's as close to sitting in inside your virtual cockpit as you can get. Follow the link in the description section to be part of their promotion and stand a chance to win your Toby Eye Tracker absolutely for free today. Their promotion only lasts until February 9th, so again, make sure to follow the link in the description section of the video and stand a chance to win your free Toby Eye Tracker today. What is going on guys, Varun from Flyby Simulations here and welcome back to another video on the channel. A long time, I know, and a different format too, I realize. Uh, but to address the former, I have to say that I haven't had the best start to 2023 with a lot of different things going on in my personal and professional life. I know a lot of people know that I'm currently a university student in Canada who's also doing a day job. So I have a ton of things on my plate and it just wasn't the right time to you know, get back into YouTube and start producing frequent high quality content for you folks. So I just kind of laid off of YouTube, took a break from that from the month of January, but fret not, we are back, we're back with a bang you know and sponsored content and everything but yeah to cut a long story short regular services will resume on flyby simulations this is going to be your home for the latest and greatest flight simulation news product reviews tutorials and everything that relates to aviation i have some great plans for the channel that i won't be going into now but it, it just trust me 2023 is going to be a good year for the flyby simulations community and of course to address the second part the infamous face reveal that every youtuber has to go through at some point i'll be honest with you guys i wanted to do this at 10,000 subscribers Subscribers. I then wanted to do this at 15,000 subscribers and it never happened. So I decided instead of choosing to do it by waiting for the right moment, I'll just make it the right moment by doing it, if that makes any sense. But of course, I'm guessing most of you guys didn't click on this video to look at my beautiful face. You guys want to know how the Toby Eye Tracker 5 performs in Microsoft Flight Simulator in 2023. And that is exactly what we will be checking out in today's video. Let's get into it. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, so we'll structure the video in the following way. My good friends at Toby Gaming actually decided to send me one of their Toby Eye Tracker 5s. The first thing I'm going to do is to show you guys how to mount it and connect it to your laptops or personal PCs. We'll then look at the Toby Experience software that it comes with. We'll then swiftly move into Microsoft Flight Simulator and have a look at setting up the Eye Tracker properly and finally perform a quick training circuit with live commentary to share my verdict on the product. Now, I do have to make it clear that though this video is sponsored and though Toby did did send me the Toby Eye Tracker 5 absolutely for free. All of the opinions that I express about the Toby Eye Tracker in this video are going to be entirely my own. Toby didn't tell me to say good things about the product. They obviously asked me to inform my community about the sweepstake campaign that's taking place, which of course you guys can find the link to in the description section of the video. But I do have to tell you guys that I will never compromise the integrity of my content based on some sort of company agenda. That will just never happen on Flyby Simulations on my watch. You guys have my word. And uh, yeah, with that all being said, let's get into how to connect this thing to your monitors. All right, so next up, let's understand how to connect the eye tracker to the monitor. You can use the USB connection and plug it into your PC or laptop like so, pretty self-explanatory. As for attaching the actual eye tracker itself, for laptops, simply grab one of these metallic trays, take the back adhesive off, and stick it either on the top or bottom of your display, wherever the actual inbuilt camera isn't being blocked, obviously. In my case, it goes on the bottom as can be seen. For this monitor clamp, it's a similar system, but the mount is also more adjustable with this moving pivot. Take off the two back adhesives and clip it onto the bottom of your monitor. The front should again have the magnet for the Toby Eye Tracker 5 that you can take on or off your monitor depending on convenience. And that's pretty much it. Next up, let's get the tracker calibrated and check out the software it comes with. So head on over to your computer and install the Toby Experience application. I'll leave a link to it down in the description section of the video. Once you're in the software, head on over to the settings window and click on improve calibration. While you're here, you'll be asked to look at these dots to properly calibrate your eye tracker. The instructions are honestly quite self-explanatory, but do keep your head still while calibrating your tracker as it might cause discrepancies if you're moving your head around. Once done, you can click this preview my gaze to bring up the Toby ghost bubble 
which allows you to have a visual representation of where you're looking and see how the tracker is performing. Remember that the Toby Eye Tracker doesn't just work for Microsoft Flight Sim, but several other games and titles too. So you can use this feature to improve your response time and reflexes if you're into competitive gaming. You even have the granularity to select which eye is being tracked by the tracker to ensure any visual impurities or disabilities on the user's side are being catered to. You'll love to see it, Toby. Good job there. Finally, I'd highly recommend you click on this change screen button to ensure your Toby eye tracker is spatially calibrated with respect to its position on your monitor or laptop. Again, simply follow the instructions on screen and you should be good to go. And that is all we have for the Toby Experience software. Next up, let's get into Microsoft Flight Simulator and show you how I have everything set and configured and perform that circuit flight to see how everything performs. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, so welcome to my Microsoft Flight Simulator main homepage. Now to set up the eye tracker, first things first, head on over to your controls options and right up here, ensure that the Toby Eye Tracker 5 is indeed visible. Next up, before going into any specific settings for the eye tracker itself, let's go back into our keyboard settings and ensure that the following two keybinds are set. Go into the search bar and search eye tracking reset and as you can see, it pops up right here. Tie this to any keybind you wish. I have mine set to this, but you can choose yours as long as it doesn't clash with any other existing keybinds. Hitting this key will allow you to recenter yourself in the virtual cockpit, and though it says eye tracking reset, it also works for head tracking, so it's pretty important to have this configured. Next up, clear the search bar and search for toggle head tracking. Again, make sure to assign a specific keybind to this and make sure it doesn't clash with anything else important. It's also crucial to note here that you can assign these keybinds to your joystick or any other peripheral device if need be. I just personally prefer to do it via my keyboard, that's all. Next up, let's head on over to our Toby eye tracker in our devices and show you my specific settings based on what I like. Now, you might notice that when you come here, there are no settings to be seen, and that is because Toby Gaming has cheekily decided to put all of the settings under this sensitivity tab. So head on over here and voila, there's the holy grail. Now, do note that all of these are my personal settings based on my personal preferences while flying. So feel free to copy them if you'd like, but we'll run through the other settings just to make sure you have a full understanding of each of them and you can manipulate and change them based on your personal flying situation or whatever. First things first, then we have this eye versus head tracking ratio. Now it's important to note here that there is a maximum allowable screen size for eye tracking to work appropriately, and that is 27 inches for a 16 by 9 aspect ratio monitor and 30 inches for a 16 by 10 aspect ratio monitor. For head tracking, however, there is no maximum screen size and you can use one, two, or even three separate monitors and your head should be tracked just fine. This is just for you to know in case you have a TV that you're running this on and it's a 16 by 9 standard standard rectangular monitor, your eye tracking won't be doing as good a job as your head tracking will. That being said, this setting simply adjusts the ratio between the two. At 100%, eye tracking gets disabled and only head tracking remains active and vice versa. Next up, the eye tracking responsiveness obviously adjusts the overall sensitivity of the eye tracking and determines how responsive the in-sim camera is to changes in your viewing. Setting it at zero completely stops eye tracking and one obviously means super sensitive eye tracking. The head tracking pitch and yaw setting affects how much the camera moves in relation to you turning your head up or down or left and right. This setting itself is a multiplier, so when you set it to 2x, moving your head 45 degrees in real life will move the camera 90 degrees in the same direction. It's great if you're a fighter pilot or something, but in my case where I usually fly airlines, I have it set to this. The same is true for this head tracking roll setting, which affects your side to side rotational movements. Same multiplier system we went through earlier, and this is my setting. This center stabilization setting is just a dead zone for the eye tracker, where turning it higher eliminates any jitters or unwanted camera movements as a result of small head movements in real life. It's set to 0.2 by default, and you can change it based on your preference of how sensitive you want your head tracking to be. This next setting here is probably one of the most important settings for the eye tracker as it gives you full control over the last three degrees of freedom, essentially allowing you to physically move up, down, left, right, as well as zoom in and out. Now, by default, this setting was set to zero for some reason, thus causing a few problems when it comes to actually getting those degrees of freedoms to work in sim, but when you turn it up, you can see the movements you can achieve in sim with it. Also, note here that having this setting at anything less than one 
one will completely eliminate the zoom in and out degrees of freedom. So leaning towards the screen or away from it in real life will not zoom your in-sim camera at all. So the minimum setting here is one if you want to have the zoom capabilities as well. Anything more than one will then just adjust the sensitivity of the camera, just like the other settings we've covered so far. But having it less than one will just eliminate the zoom function completely, which I don't recommend. And finally, we have this head tracking auto center setting, which has just two parameters, zero and one. When set to zero, it won't auto center itself. And when set to one, it will gradually auto center the camera if no other inputs are made. Pretty self-explanatory. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Microsoft Flight Simulator. And as you can see, we are situated at Wellington International Airport in New Zealand with the Cessna 172 Skyhawk. Um, with the G1000, of course. And we have head tracking and eye tracking and everything disabled at the moment. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and you guys are going to be able to see how this thing looks. So there's that button and there we go. Head tracking is enabled. So we can move side to side, right, right, up, down. We can go closer to the monitor, come further away. Now, when I'm demonstrating all of this, there might be a few mic lapses. So if you guys are hearing some uh, tonality changes in the mic, uh, it's just because I'm moving closer to the screen, moving further away from the screen. It's not uniform. So I hope you guys can excuse me there. But yeah, the entire point of doing this is just to be able to do a traffic pattern, show you guys uh, how the Toby Eye Tracker works, what utilities it can serve, and how it, it how it could be helpful in different situations. So we'll go ahead and get the parking brake released. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and give us full power. There we go. And we have started rolling, my friends. Let's keep the uh, aircraft on the center line. Airspeed is alive. We're looking for 60 knots before we can rotate. And yeah, this is already a whole different experience from flying an aircraft on a 2D screen. There we go, 60 knots. Let's go ahead and pull up. And we're gonna keep around about 10 degrees there. And yeah, usually, now if I'm flying on a 2D screen, I would have to use my mouse to be able to look left and right, especially if it's a beautiful departure location like Wellington. But now all I have to do is just look to the left and there you go. There's Wellington International, or not international, the city of Wellington, I guess. And there it is. A few foggy conditions over there. But yeah, that's the beauty of this. Now, I have a couple of notes that I want to run through here on my iPad, so I might be glancing over from time to time. But the first thing I want to talk about is the six degrees of freedom. Now, prior to March 2022, I believe the product itself didn't have six degrees of freedom. What these degrees of freedom are, are all the different ways in which you can actually move your head around and have your uh, sort of... Uh, in sim camera react to it so uh, not only now can we look at different things like right left like this we can actually move closer to things as i showed you guys the zoom effect we can actually spatially change our location in the flight deck itself so we can move to the right seat if we want we can move all the way to the left and kind of hug the window here and we can even move up and down so i can sh i can see the actual hood of the plane and we can move down we can see the different aspects of the plane that you would otherwise not have appreciated. But yeah, that's really, really cool. And that's uh, that's an addition to the Toby suite of products that they made last year. I don't know how many people know that. Um, but yeah, that definitely makes this a top contender if you really want to be immersed in your Microsoft Flight Simulator um, sort of experience, I guess. Another thing I wanted to talk about here is the extra features that you get with this product and extra little quality of life things that you that you can you know come to expect with this for example we already saw in the software that it does have quite a bit of support for visual impairities uh, and visual disabilities now it's not just limited to people with proper visual disabilities even if you have uh, sort of glasses the eye tracker and the head tracker can still deal with that very very well so I'll just go ahead and demonstrate this for you guys. If you can stand by for two seconds, I'll go ahead and put on my blue light glasses that I was wearing towards the start of the video. And we're going to see how the head tracker and the eye tracker can actually um, react and uh, pick up my movements in sim. Stand by. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. So as you can see, I have my um, glasses here. And if you guys just pay attention to my face, it does very well recognize my eyes. So if I look left, it does look left. Top right bottom right bottom left 
there we go and of course the head tracking also works perfectly fine look at all that mist down there in the distance we have some water textures over there and of course that is completely covered in just some sort of dense fog uh, low level fog so yeah it definitely works with it and I actually have quite a bit of glare light on my on my face as well thanks to my ring light we're in some dense thick layer of cloud I decided to come down for some reason and as you can see the winds are battering us right now so I'm gonna try and see if I can't adjust the weather just to be able to demonstrate this product a little bit better to you guys we're actually flying straight towards a mountain this is not looking good so stand by let me just adjust this real quick and I'll be back Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, we are back and we are now climbing. I've just put the scattered, uh, I've just put the scattered clouds preset here, so uh, it is easily visible. But yeah, speaking of the ring light, um, the eye tracker and the head tracker also does a remarkable job in uh, sort of um, replicating the insim movements in low light conditions. So if I turn off my actual light here. As you can see, my face has gotten a whole lot dimmer because it's only being illuminated by the screen itself. The head tracker is still able to do its job. There we go. And the water actually looks much nicer there. You can actually see a lot of details. Now, if you're a bit of an external aircraft flyer, then I guess I have to also tell you guys that this product also works very well from an external perspective. Of course, the translational movements like moving left and right wouldn't work so well, but of course you can take in the vistas much better with just your eyes if you guys want to which I'm currently doing and uh, yeah pretty cool stuff alrighty so we're back in the cockpit and it's time to talk about a few cons here so if you guys are under the impression that this is some sort of gimmick it's definitely not in fact I would go so far as to say that if you guys have just gotten into the flight simulation hobby don't invest in this right away first invest in the important things like a good sight stick or a yoke and a throttle quadrant some rudder pedals and only then once you've actually uh, sort of streamlined your setup and you really want to take this seriously and want to practice those maneuvers uh, to be able to prepare yourself for flight school or something like that and if you want the total immersive experience then you should go for something like the Toby eye tracker but in the space that it occupies in the Microsoft flight simulator market I think it's definitely a um, a contender to be a leader uh, because I mean I've flown the Cessna 172 Skyhawk multiple times in a simulator before but the ability to have the glare shield right in front of me when I needed to the ability to zoom into instruments whenever I please that's something that's um, it's underrated People wouldn't understand if, you, if you've if you never tried this before, but it's definitely something that, you know, you can't take for granted because it's, it's very, very cool. Uh, and I'm doing this on a small 1080p monitor. If you guys are on a 4K 30-inch or 27-inch curved display or something like that with multiple monitor setups, this would be pretty, pretty cool. Now, all roses have their thorns, and I have to say that this product doesn't just get by with just having pros. Uh, one of the biggest things that I've noticed with this product is I'm not a big fan of the eye tracking. I'm not going to lie. So um, that's a little anticlimactic considering that the product's name itself has eye tracker in it. But I personally like the head tracking much better. In fact, right now, if you guys notice, I'm looking at the camera and talking to you guys and my eyes aren't being tracked. That's because I've actually turned off eye tracking. I only like to keep the head tracking running because I think that's a more realistic representation of what you do in real life. Things don't just come into your view in real life when you look at them. Like if I look at my light right now, which is on my side, it's not just going to come into view and my, my view isn't just going to get centered. I'd have to move my head to look at something for that to happen. I don't know if that makes much sense, but um, I think that head tracking gives you a much more realistic, immersive experience. Uh, and that then begs the question, is the $200 price tag worth it to get an eye tracker plus a head tracker versus something that just gives you a head tracker? Another little thing that I've noticed is that some of the settings need to be completely reset in order for them to work with the Toby Eye Tracker in Microsoft Flight Simulator specifically sometimes. And that means you might have to reset the setting, turn off Microsoft Flight Simulator, turn off the Toby Experience app, uh, which runs in the background to facilitate the actual eye tracking itself, and sometimes even eject the eye tracker and basically unplug the USB and restart everything for it to work. Um, I don't know if this is on Asobo or if this is on Toby's end, but I think a software update is very much necessary, a quality of life update for, for the users to be able to have the product run, um, you know, to up to standard. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, so I think we're about to make our final uh, turn to final here. There we go, we can start now. 
We can also start dropping some flaps here. That's going to give us that balloon effect and it's going to start slowing our speed down. So let's give it some throttle to compensate. And there we go. Now, this is where the Toby Eye Tracker can really, uh, you know, be used as a training utility. Uh, lots of people would want to, uh, you know, get into flight school through flight simulation and having something like this that allows you to uh, basically not put on a VR headset um, while still experiencing what it feels like to have complete uh, visual control over your surroundings. I think it's definitely worth it. So I can already tell that there are some flying principles such as keeping the glare shield of the uh, of the aircraft above the piano tile markings while landing to, you know, achieve a smooth landing. All of that stuff is practically impossible to do if you're just running this on a 2D monitor with, you know, preset custom camera views. I think the ability to kind of move up and down, kind of position yourself in your seat, it definitely adds to the immers immersion experience. Anyways, let's try and see if we can't maximize our potential with this landing here. We're coming up over the piano tiles. We have the flaps fully extended. Let's start slowing this puppy down. And as soon as we pass over the piano tiles, we'll go ahead and kill the power completely. There we go. The G1000 assisting us with that. And we're going to go ahead and start flaring, flaring, flaring. There we go. There's a smooth touchdown. Welcome to Wellington International Airport again, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys enjoyed this ride. Hope you guys found this little first impressions slash review training flight worth it. Um, let me know down in the comment section below. Do you guys think that you want to go for a product like this? And even if you don't want to go for a product like this, getting a product like this for free is never, never bad. So do check out the link in the description section of the video and stand a chance to win this Toby Eye Tracker completely for free. And hey, if you don't win the first prize, and if you're really looking to get into flight simulation, you could even win five copies of Microsoft Flight Simulator. For those of you guys that have been eyeing this product for a while, there's also a 15% discount that um, that Toby is running throughout the promotional period. So you guys have until February 9th, which is I think six more days from now when this video goes out. Um, go ahead. No better time than now to pick up the Toby Eye Tracker if you guys have been eyeing it for a while. But you guys have heard it here first. My reviews, my verdicts has a lot of positives few negatives that can that can still be resolved through product updates and so on. I'm just going to go ahead and turn off the eye tracker here. But yeah, that's what my personal opinion is on this product. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below what you guys want to see next. Of course, 2023 has begun for flyby simulations and tons and tons of good content will be coming to the channel very, very soon. So do hit that bell icon so you guys stay notified every time I put out a video. Until the next time, guys, thanks for watching. And thanks for flying by.